Our story today is called Home at Last, A Story of Migration by April Pulley Sayer. You might recognize the animals on the cover of this book, big antlers. These are caribou, also known as reindeer. I wonder what kind of story of migration they may have. Let's begin. In the dark of night, a warbler finds her way by stars. Her wings flap a thousand miles. Will she reach her summer home? No one knows, but like the others, she's heading for home at last. I see a night sky. I see this beautiful little bird right here, a warbler. I wonder if she'll reach her home at last. A thousand miles is a very long way. Let's keep reading and find out. Do you recognize these animals? I see a lot of fish jumping into the air. How incredible. It looks like they're jumping up waterfalls. That must take a lot of energy. Let's see what it says. Out at sea, grown up salmon Remember a smell. It's the smell of the stream where they were born. They'll swim 2,000 miles, hop up waterfalls, just to be home at last. Incredible! Salmon are very energetic fish. They have a long journey that they must make to go from their entire adult lives in the ocean all the way back up the exact streams and rivers to the exact place where they themselves were born. That is where they'll lay eggs and the next generation will be born exactly where they were. And they make their way from wide open ocean all the way up to the exact stream or creek where they were born by using a sense of smell. Are there any smells that you sniff that remind you of a certain place or maybe a certain memory? For me, there are a lot of food smells that remind me of my family and my childhood and even certain times of year. What an incredible sense of smell. Let's see who's next. This looks like a turtle. Deep blue, maybe the ocean, let's find out. Flippers push, gently paddle, a sea turtle swims. No one knows how she finds her way but she swims across the ocean to a beach where she was born. She lays her eggs there. Home at last. These green sea turtles do an incredible thing, just like those salmon. They're able to find their way across vast oceans to the exact beach where they were born, crawl up onto the beach, dig a small sandy nest and lay eggs so that their babies are born in the exact same place that they were. What an amazing memory. Do you recognize this animal? Flying high in the sky. Tiny wings carry a monarch hundreds of miles, one flutter and flap at a time. She flies to a mountain she's never seen yet somehow she knows she's home at last these monarch butterflies are really incredible migrators do you see how many of them are all together around these trees some populations of monarchs will travel hundreds of miles to spend the winter in a warm place often in places like Southern California and Mexico. And when it starts to warm up again, they begin the journey north. They don't make the entire journey north and south in their own lifetime, but their children and their grandchildren will somehow arrive at the exact place where they started their journey without ever having been there themselves. Isn't that amazing? Imagine having a memory passed from generation to generation. It's one of the incredible things about our natural world. Aha, back in the ocean again. 
On his first journey, a young gray whale swims with his mother from warm tropical waters to cold Arctic seas. Once there, he and his family will feast on plankton aplenty. Fat and full, they'll be home at last. These gray whales have a long way to go. They go from the warm waters around Baja, California, all the way up the West Coast to Arctic waters, where their new babies will join them in a feast on plankton after having been born and raised to be strong enough for the journey in those warm waters. Gray whales are one of the whales that you can see off the coast of the West Coast. They sometimes come in very close to shore and there are opportunities to see them from beaches here in California and other states on the West Coast, or perhaps even go out on a boat to get a closer look. How incredible. Aha, here's our caribou from the title or from the front of the book. <laughs> a caribou herd like a river of antlers walks and eats and walks. They head from the forest to their summer home, the coastal plain. When they reach it, they'll be home at last. Look how different this environment is from the last page. Wide open plains. Do you see any trees? I don't see any trees. I see a lot of green grass and wide open vistas. If we look back at where they started in the forest, everybody's close together, staying warm. I see snow, lots of trees. Do you see any grass on the ground? Very little. It's mostly brown. These caribou spend their winters in dense forests where the wind gets stopped by big trees, so it's kind of warmer, where they can huddle together and be safe from the winter winds and snow. But there's not a whole lot to eat here in the wintertime. They move thousands of miles to these wide open coastal plains, but that would be way too harsh in the winter with all of those ocean winds coming off the shore, onto the shore. But in the summer, they're mild, there's lots of green grass, and this is where they travel to have their babies. Their babies can eat that green grass and grow very big and strong very fast, so they're ready to make the journey back to the forest in the winter. It's also a great place for the herd to keep safe. Rather than the forest with all of those trees offering hiding places for predators, they can see any other animal approaching them from very far away. It's a great place to be together and be safe and take care of their families. In the fall, lobsters walk single file from deep water to their winter home, the reef. March, 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 tentacle to tail. They march until they're home at last. They march in lines, these lobsters, truly from tentacle to tail, sometimes lines of 50 lobsters long, and they find their way to warmer waters for the winter. Aha, we have a bird here above the ocean waves. My friends, this animal travels the longest distance of any other animal in this book. Incredible. An Arctic tern hovers then dives for fish. He has two homes, one at each end of the earth. He'll need lots of food to fuel his 12,000 mile trip, but it's worth it to be home at last. These Arctic terns spend their summers in the Arctic at the north tip of the earth. And when it starts to get cold, they fly 12,000 miles all the way down to Antarctica, where summer is just beginning to spend the winter months in Antarctica. And when it starts to get cold there, they fly all the way back to the Arctic, to the other end of the earth. They live their life in sort of an endless summer. That might sound nice to some, being in the sun all the time. What an incredible journey. In spring, a wood frog hops 
over rocks, through fields, across roads, by a house. He smells the moist air, the leaves, the pond, and then he knows he's home at last. These wood frogs are born, like most frogs, from a tadpole in a pond. But when they reach maturity, they hop off away from the pond and spend a lot of their lives in the woods. When it's time to have a family of their own though, they hop back to the exact same pond where they were born using their smell like those salmon and they lay eggs of their own. Isn't that incredible? Look who's next, this might look familiar. Is this our bird from the first page? In that same pond, the frog joins a chorus. They fill the forest with sound. Just then, a tired bird lands on a branch high above. The warbler has reached her home at last. Isn't that incredible? She made it, my friends, a thousand miles. These are yellow rumped warblers. And I love these birds because they're one of the migratory birds I can see here in Los Angeles in the winter time. They're here right now. But these birds live all over the Northern United States and Canada from east to west coast in the summertime. And they travel south to all of the Southern United States and Mexico and Central America in the winter time to stay warm. So you might be able to view these birds wherever you are tuning in from today. If you are in the Southern United States or Mexico or Central America, and you might be able to catch a glimpse of them in the summertime. If you live in the Northern United States or Canada, these are really incredible birds. That is the end of our story. My friends, like I mentioned, birds like yellow rumped warblers and cedar waxwings are another favorite of mine here in Southern California. There are migratory birds that you can look for wherever you live. And you can talk with your grown-ups about finding out what those birds look like, what their favorite foods might be. That's a good way to find them and locate them. I love to bird watch in the winter and see what kinds of visitors are hanging out here in the warm Los Angeles weather with us. You can also think about maybe talking with your grown-ups, like we mentioned at the beginning, about any migratory stories within your family. Maybe there are places where your parents, you, your grandparents, your great-grandparents traveled from. And it's really interesting to think about what we have in common with all of these animals, that we are humans, we are animals too. And no matter why we move or migrate or travel, whether it's from one place to another, or maybe even just out of our house to go on a trip to a farmer's market or a grocery store. We all make movements and migrations to find the things that we need to be happy and healthy and safe. Whatever you do with your day, I hope you have a fantastic one and we will see you again next Friday for Storytime Live from the Natural History Museum of LA County. Have a fantastic day, everyone. Music